Hey, welcome back. This is Math 0955. We're going to start working with negative exponents and then at the end of the video, scientific notation. So uh, the way I think of negative exponents is kind of it, it moves the term up and down in the denominator. So if you have 3 to the negative 2, you, you could also, you, you know, the, the deal is you can think of any integer value as a fraction, right? So you can think of 5 as the same as 5 over 1, okay? So I, I typically think of 3 to the negative 2 as 3 to the negative 2 over 1. And then the negative exponent, what you want to do with that is just move the, the expression to the denominator. So you're going to move it downwards, okay? So you'll be left with a 1 as a kind of the placeholder up top, or you could even think of, all right, there's also a 1 here. And then you're moving the 3 to the negative 2 to the to the denominator, but in order to move it, you have to change the exponent sign. So it'll be 3 then squared. Okay, so th that's the way I think of it. It's not what the book thinks, but it's, it's kind of an idea of moving stuff up and down. So for example, later on, we'll see stuff like 1. Um, right. So we'll see stuff like 1 all over 3 to the negative 4, right? So, uh, you know, ideally we want to get rid of these negative exponents. That'll be a big deal for us get rid of the negative exponent. So how do I do that? Well, in this case, you're going to move up, right? You're going to move the 3 to the negative 4 into the numerator, change the sign of the exponent, and you get 3 to the 4th all over 1, which should just be 3 to the 4th, okay? Taking that into now more of a uh, more complicated uh, problems, maybe we have 3 to the negative 5, uh, x to the negative 2 all over, let's say, uh, 4 to the negative 3, y to the negative uh, 7, okay? So I'm going to move uh, the 4 to the negative 3 up. It'll be 4 to the positive 3. Move the y to the negative 7 up. It'll be y to the positive 7. Move the 3 to the negative 5 down. It'll be 3 to the fifth. The x to the negative 2 down. It'll be x squared, okay? So our goal is to get rid of those negative exponents. Okay, what, what the heck are these negative exponents, though? You know, that, that's a good question. It's a fair question. Um, we can answer it kind of by looking at a, a concrete example here. So let's say um, z to the negative, no, that's not, not even that. Let's say z to the um, third power all over z to the fifth power, right? If we use our rules for exponents, the, sub, the sort of subtraction rule that we have already, it would be z to the 3 minus 5, okay? And that would be z to the negative 2. So there, there's the negative exponent rearing its ugly head. But but what is it, you know? Um, we could also, so, so we go back to the original expression, all right? So let's restart here at z cubed over z to the fifth. I'm going to... Um, use the definition of the exponent as repeated multiplication to rewrite the numerator. Okay, so instead of z cubed, I'll have z times z times z. Instead of z to the fifth, I have z times z times z times z times z. And then we can remove like terms. z over z is same as 1 over 1. z over z is same as 1 over 1. z over z is same as 1 over 1. And I end up with um, 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, all over 1 times 1 times 1 times z times z is z squared. Okay, so, so that's what that negative exponent is. It's, it's kind of rewriting whatever you got as, a, well, in this case, as, as a fraction. Um, but the way I always think of it is just kind of moving up and down, right? So that z to the negative 2 you could think of it as uh, z to the negative 2 over 1, and then you just move the z to the negative 2 down to the denominator and change the exponent. So it's kind of like an elevator function. You're either going moving up or you're going down and the fraction. Okay, okay so, you know, that's that's the, the sort of the, the behind the scenes and then the kind of way I think of it. Uh, hopefully something will click for you as we go through the exercises. Okay, so problem one, we have 3 to the negative 2. They want you to write the expression with positive exponents and simplify if possible. So they're going to want you to multiply out at the end. Okay, 
So just as before, um, three to the negative two, uh, it, you're going to drop the three to the denominator and change the sign of the exponent. Okay, so you're always changing the sign of the exponent. So that'd be one over nine. Uh, three times three is nine. Um, same deal, that would be one over eight. Okay, so now it's a little different. You, you get the, when you're changing the sign of the exponent, that does not apply to the, the base or any other negative in uh, the base, okay? Uh, the bottom part of the expression. So a, a big problem for beginning students is, you know, I'm gonna move this to the denominator like this, but then they, they, what they want to do is change the negative 12 and the positive 12, and that's just not going to work, okay? That doesn't work. Um, what you do is take the whole thing, the whole object, whatever the heck it is, and move it to the denominator, and, and you're only changing the sign of the exponent. The, the overall negative or positiveness of the expression does not really get affected. Um, now that we're in the second step, then we can multiply out the negative 12 squared. Okay, so negative 12 squared is basically negative 12 times negative 12. A negative raised to an even power will be positive. Um, 12 times 12 then is 144. Okay, so you just get 1 over 144. Okay, so, so the point being here is that whatever the heck the base is, that's going to change. But, but now we, we also have to worry about, all right, what if the, the negative isn't in the parentheses? So before when we saw this problem, it was uh, things like this, negative 3 squared in parentheses versus negative 3 squared. So in the first case, the base is all of this stuff, the negative 3 portion. Um, so the exponent applies to, to the entire base, the negative 3. And you would have negative 3 times negative 3, which would be 9. In the second case, the base is just 3. The negative is not affected by the exponent 2. So it's really, you think of it as negative 1 times 3 squared, which will be negative 1 times 9. So this answer is actually negative. Okay. All right, so in problem 4, then, we have negative 7 to the negative 2. So what I would do is probably just rewrite it. Let's just think of it as negative 1 times 7 to the negative 2. And then you could say, all right, uh, let's get rid of that negative exponent by dropping the 7 to the denominator. So negative 1 times 1 all over 7 to the positive 2. And then we have negative 1 times 1 over 49 and that will just be negative 1 over 49. Right? So in that case, the exponent does not affect the negative because the negative is not really in the base. You don't see those parentheses like you did in problem 3. Okay. Um, number 5 is a bit of a silly question. It seems 14 to the negative 1. That's the same as 1 all over 14 to the positive 1, but that's just 1 over 14. So they don't want you to write the, the, the 1 exponent in there. 1 over 14 will do. And now we're, we're kind of just beating a horse to death. We have 3 to the negative 1 plus 2 to the negative 1. I'm going to rewrite those first. So I drop the 3 to the denominator, change the sign of the exponent, so just 1 over 3 to the 1, which is 1 over 3. And then the second guy is 1 over 2 to the 1, which is 1 over 2. So you're basically for adding two fractions together. Okay. In order to do that, you have to multiply by the denominator. Uh, you have to multiply top and bottom, sorry, uh, of the first fraction by 2, the top and bottom of the second by 3. That will give you a 2, 6 plus 3, 6. And that should be 5, 6. Six. Um, and now we have the opposite rule. So the, the original rule up uh, to the top that we learned then it would be stuff like 5 to the negative 3 is equal to 1 over 5 to the positive 3. Now we're moving in the other direction, right? So if I have 1 over uh, 5 to the negative 3, 
then you could rewrite it as five to the positive three. And it's really just about, again, moving up or down. So if it's uh, negative three in the numerator, you move it down. If it's negative three in the denominator, you move it up, right? But then you, you simplify so you don't see it as being in the numerator, it's just five cubed. So in this case, uh, problem seven, you have one over three to the negative two. I, I'm gonna move it up to the numerator. So you get three squared over one, that's just uh, three, nine over one, which is nine. Uh, now they're dealing with the base stuff, with the negatives. So the, the negative is included in the base because of the parentheses. So you just bring that whole thing up to the numerator, change the sign of the exponent. And then negative 12 squared is positive 144 um, over one if you wish, but that's just 144. Um, now we have multiple terms in the top and bottom. So if you have a problem like this, it's just move uh, up and or down in order to get rid of those negative exponents. Okay, so here I'm going to move the 4 down, the 8 up. So move the 8 up, I get 8 to the positive 5th. Move the 4 down, 4 to the positive 4. And then I'm going to literally, because I don't feel like getting my calculator out, rewrite using the definition of the exponent as uh, repeated multiplication, and then simplify. So 8 over 4 is the same as 2 over 1. Again, 8 over 4 is the same as 2 over 1. Again, 8 over 4 is the same as 2 over 1. Finally, 8 over 4 is the same as 2 over 1. So I end up with 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. I'll be 16 times, geez, 8. So 128 all over 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, which is just 1. OK, uh, next rule is kind of, um, you can think of it as, well, I mean, it's, it's just a distribution kind of idea. Again, so, so the rule is, is kind of like if you had, um, let's say 3x cubed all over uh, y squared raised to the third power, what would you do? You would multiply out the exponent. So it'd be 3 cubed x to the ninth all over y to the sixth. Same game here. Okay? Nothing's really changed. Um, I have 1 over 5 to negative 3. So the exponent on 1 is 1. The exponent on 5 is 1. So you get 1 to the negative 3 all over 5 to the negative 3. To move the 5 up, change the exponent, move the 1 down, change the exponent, and then multiply out. 5 cubed is 125, 1 cubed is 1, simplify that, it's 125. And more of the same. Uh, here you're, you're again kind of worried about where the base is located. So in the denominator, the exponent on the 9 is 1, and the exponent on the, on the x is negative 5. So you leave the 9 where it is, and you're going to move the x to the negative 5 upstairs. I mean, literally, in the, in the upstairs, it's 1 times x to the negative 5, x to the positive 5 now, all over 9. Um, but you don't need the 1, right? So you just write x to the 5 over 9. Uh, this is just moving up and down, so it'd be y over x to the fifth. Uh, we've got the negative base issue again, so 14, 9 all over negative 2 to the negative 3. So you're going to move the negative 2 to the negative 3 up, change the sign of the exponent, it'll be over 1, but you don't need the 1, right? So it's really just 9 times uh, negative 2 cubed, that will end up being negative because you're raising a negative to an odd power. So positive times negative is negative. Uh, 2 cubed is 8. And so you get negative 72. 
Okay. Um, now we're on to kind of uh, back to multiplication, but with negative exponents. Um, so uh, again, the, the rule here is if you have like bases, if you have b to the m times b to the n, all you need to do is add the exponents, right? The only difference with this problem is one of the exponents is negative, but you still follow the rule, okay? It's x to the negative 7 times x to the 4th. All right, so you'll have x to the negative 7 plus 4, which is equal to x to the negative 3. And then one of the rules we have here is that you cannot have a negative exponent in your answer. So we want to rewrite this. So x to the negative 3, you drop the x to the denominator, change the sign of the exponent, and then you're done. Okay. So in this section, what I believe you're doing is just simplifying the heck out of these exponential expressions. And so to simplify, you first need to get rid of uh, like bases. So, uh, well, also get rid of negative exponents. So just say get rid of negative exponents. Um, secondly, you don't want repeated bases. So on problem 15, we have two x bases. We want to combine those together. So that's what the second rule means. Get rid of repeated bases. Um, then you don't want any powers raised to another power. So simplify. Um, powers to powers. Uh, we haven't really seen one of those, but for example, x cubed to the second power. We would want to simplify that, and the way we did it was multiplying exponents. Um, fourthly, you want to get rid of all the parentheses. Okay? So if you're following that fourth rule, you kind of already take care of the third rule. Um, get rid of parentheses. Okay, so let's look at 16. Um, we have a multiplication, 5x to the negative 7 times 4x cubed. So I'm going to multiply the constants. 5 times 4 is 20. And they have x to the negative 7 plus 3. Negative 7 plus 3. So I'll have 20x to the negative 4. And then you have to simplify the negative, this negative 4 part. So you can think of it as 20x to the negative 4 over 1, and then just move the x to the negative 4 down. So you get 20 all over x to the positive 4. Um, here we have some repeated bases. So number 17, you have x to the 4th all over x to the 6th. So, um, you can subtract the exponent, so you can bring the 6 up and subtract, and you'll have x to the 4 minus 6. But that's uh, going to give you a negative exponent, and then you're going to have to move that back downstairs. So the rule of thumb to avoid negative exponents, you're kind of moving up or down. So if you have, uh, so let's look at some examples. If you have x to the 10th all over x to the... Um, well, let's just, let's just do the same example again. Okay, so x to the fourth all over x to the sixth. Instead of uh, moving the x to the sixth up, you can move the x to the fourth down. All right? So it would be like 1 all over x to the sixth times x to the negative 4. And then you could add the exponents together. So it would be 1 over x to the sixth plus negative 4. Okay? And that would be 1 over x squared. So it's quicker to eventually just move down instead of like move up and then change the negative exponent positive. So, so the, the corresponding rule you could think of is if you have something like x to the m all over x to the n, there's two ways you could move things about. You can move the n up, which would look like this, x to the m minus n all over 1. Or you can move 
the x to the m down, which is going to end up looking like 1 all over x to the n minus m. Okay. All right, so uh, for example, if you have, let's say, a to the fifth all over a to the seventh, you don't want to move the 7 up and go a to the 5 minus 7. Okay. You want to move the a to the fifth down, you don't have a to the 7 minus 5, which will be 1 all over a squared. On the other hand, if you had something like a to the tenth all over a to the third, you want to move the a to the third up. Right, so you go a to the 10 and then minus the 3 all over 1, which would be a to the 7. Okay. But if that's too much, you can, you can always just do it the long way and subtract the exponents and then convert back to um, this expression. And this takes a lot of practice, and, but it's so important later on in math that you be able to have fluency with this kind of material. Okay. Okay, let's look at 18. So 44z to the 10th all over 11z to the 12th. Okay. So 44 all over 11 is the same as uh, 4 all over 1, just dividing top and bottom by 11. Okay. So I have 4z to the 10th all over 1, which I'll just write z, 1 times z is z, to the 12th. Okay, now I'm going to move the z to the 10th downwards, so I'll have 4 all over z to the 12th minus 10, which will be 2. Okay. The other way you can think of it is 4 all over z to the 12th minus 10, right? And then that, well, that's what I just did, sorry. Uh, you can think of it as going 4 to, and then bring the z to the 12th up, z to the 10 minus 12, but that's just going to be 4 to this times z to the negative 2, and then you have to rewrite it as 4 over z squared. Okay, uh, let's try 19. So I have negative 12a cubed all over 36a to the fifth. So first, negative by negative is positive. Uh, sorry, negative by positive is negative. 12 all over 36 is the same as 1 over 3. So in the numerator, I'll have a cubed. The denominator, I have a to the fifth. And then let's bring the a cubed down. So I'll have negative 1 all over a to the 5 minus 3, which is 2. Oops, I put a z in there. Oops, three. I lost a three in there. So it should be a three right here. All right, uh, number 20. So we have to multiply the exponents in the denominator first. So that's our power, our product to power rule, I believe it's called. So if you have uh, 3 squared raised to the fifth, you're uh, multiplying the exponents. So you have 3 to the tenth. Okay, so here it'll be x to the eighth all over x to the 5 times 4 is 20. I'm going to bring the x to the eighth down. If you bring the x to the 20 up, you'll get x to the 8 minus 20, which would be x to the negative 12. And then you have to bring that down. Right, so it would be 1 over x to the 12th. Again, what I'm saying is that you, you just automatically bring that x to the 8th down. So you'd have x to the 20 minus 8, which would give you the x to the 12th, 1 over x to the 12th. Um, okay, so 21, yeah, 2x squared to the 4th all over x to the 12th. So you'll have uh, the exponent on 2 is 1. So you have 2 to the 4th times x to the 4th times 2 is 8 over x to the 12th. 2 to the 4th is 16. And then I'm going to bring the x to the 8th down. So I have x to the 12 minus 8, which is 16 all over x to the 4th. Uh, negative exponent um, to 22. 
We have x to the 6 all over x to the 4th, that raised to the negative third power. So I'm going to multiply the exponents. So we x to the negative 18 all over x to the negative 12. And then you could bring the negative 12 up or the negative 18 down. Let's bring the negative 18 down. So I'll have 1 all over. And so it's x to the, just automatically rewrite x to the negative 12 and then minus the exponent from the top. And the exponent on the top is already negative, so it's going to be minus minus will be a plus. Okay, so it would be 1 all over x to the negative 12 plus 18, which will be 1 all over x to the 6. All right, 23, I have 5x to the negative 1 raised to the negative 2. So the base and side here, the base, uh, the first guy base is 5, the exponent is 1, and the second base there is x, and the exponent is negative 1. So we're multiplying exponents, so it'll be 5 to the 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, and then x to the negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. Then I, I don't want that negative exponent, so I have to drop the 5 to the denominator and change the sign of the exponent. So I have x squared over 25. Okay, now we we're going to have some a, a whole bunch of terms in the numerator. So you have 2x to the 7th times 3x cubed all over 27x to the 6. Okay, so in the numerator, 2 times 3, if you want to, you can start simplifying, but let's just go 2 times 3 is 6. x to the 7th times x cubed, add the exponent, so x to the 10th, all over 27x to the 6. 6 over 27, I can divide both top and bottom by 3, 2 over 9. So I have 2, and then I can... Uh, move the uh, x in the denominator up, and I'll have 2x to the 10 minus 6 all over 9. So I'll be 2x to the 4th all over 9, and that should do it. We have 5y cubed squared y to the negative 3. So again, the, the exponent on the 5 is a 1, and then we're multiplying out the exponents there. So you have 5 squared y to the 6 times y to the negative 3. Then we have uh, 5 squared is 25. And then like bases, you add the exponents for multiplying. So you have 6 plus negative 3. That would be 25y to the 6 minus 3 is just 3. Um, okay, let's try 27. I have a to the negative 5, b to the positive 7, raised to the negative 4. Okay, so I'm going to multiply the exponents. So I have a to the positive 20, b to the negative 28 and then get rid of the negative exponents by moving up or down. So I'm going to move the b down and change the sign of its exponent. So it's just multiplying the exponents and then moving up and down. Okay, and then we get into finally to scientific notation. So numbers, uh, scientific notation always look like a times 10 to some power, let's say n. And the a value has to be in between um, 1 and uh, 10. Okay, so it, it can't go, it can't have... Uh, it can't be like two, 23, or it can't be 10. Some, it has to be like 9.5. It, it'll have uh, just a, a single digit in front of whatever its decimal is. Okay. Um, 
So you, you'll see this in the calculator, it'll look like A, and I think they use a, an, an E, and then uh, the exponent. So whatever the exponent is, maybe negative 2. So it's the, so for instance, if you had 3 times 10 squared in the calculator, it would be 3 E 2. Okay. Uh, it would be, you would see that as your answer, but you would need to convert it. So, so in the beginning, what we do is just kind of learning how to convert back and forth. And first we'll go from scientific notation into decimal notation. So we're more familiar with the decimal notation. And it's fairly simple. You're just going to multiply um, using your calculator. So let's get my calculator out. All right, so we have 9.9 .9 times 10, and then I use the exponent key. It looks like an x to the y. So uh, x to the y, and here is 4. Okay? So it would be 99,000. So you could do it with your calculator, but they kind of also want you to do it by hand. So to do it by hand, what you're doing is just going to, you're just going to move the, the decimal place four places to the right in this case. So you'd go one, two, three, four. All right, that'd be zero, zero. You put some zeros in there, and so our answer is 99,000. Okay. But you know, you could do it with a calculator. You have a calculator there. And it's not a bad idea to kind of I guess I didn't check my answer. There you go. Okay. Um, so same deal here, we have 8.21 times 10 to the 6. So on your calculator, you know, you're going 8.21 8 times 10 raised to the 6 power, and we get that thing. But we to do it by hand, you know, you take the 8.21, and then you just move the decimal 6 places to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Put some zeros in the humps. And you get eight two one zero 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 zero. So why would I use this kind of notation? Well, definitely in astronomy, when you're talking about distances to to different planets, those distances are huge, and the numbers are huge. So you use scientific notation, but you also use it for stuff that's really really small. Um, before we get there, let's, let's look at number 31, which is kind of a silly problem. 1.1 times 10 to the 0. 10 to the 0, anything to the 0 is just 1. So it's 1.1 times 1, which is just 1.1. 1 .1. Okay. So in that case, you, you probably wouldn't use you know, scientific notation. Um, but uh, the other setting for scientific notation is in chemistry, where you're dealing with really, really small things, or maybe in quantum physics, you have to deal with small stuff, and you have really, really small numbers. So, for example, number 32, 7.5 times 10 to the negative 6, you're moving the decimal in the other direction. So here I have 7.5. Instead of moving the decimal to the right, I go to the left by 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so there's my new decimal point, and they just put zeros in here. I like to put a zero in the front as well. So you'll have um, 0 0.1234575. So it gives you a shorthand way of writing these really, really small numbers. Um, great. Let's do one more of these, 34. We have 5.15 times 10 to the negative 4. So I'm taking 5.15 and I'm moving 1, 2, 3, 4 places to the right, or sorry, the left. Two, three. So our answer will be 0 0.0005. Uh, now we're going in the other direction, so I have to go from decimal to scientific. And it's kind of just knowing where to put the decimal place. So uh, problem 35, I have 827000. I want to put the decimal after the first number right there. 
So the decimal is originally here at the end, after the zeros, and then you're going to have to move one, two, three, four, five places over. Okay, so you're going to have 8.27 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Seven. And then to use for the multiplication symbol, you have to use their little symbols in the, um, in the box at the bottom of the screen here. You have to literally go down there and click on that button. You can't just put an X in there. It won't work. I've already tried. Okay, so 95 million. 95, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So the decimal place is originally here. We want to put it here. So you get 9.5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 places over. So it'll be 9.5 times 10 to the 7th. Okay. So you only want one number in front of the decimal for scientific notation. 5, then you have to hit the button. 10 to the 7th. Um, here's a silly one. I'll just be 4.91 times 10 to the second. 5.501 times 10 to the third. And now we're going in the opposite direction. Okay, so your exponents will be negative for these. Smaller numbers have negative exponents. So originally the decimal is um, right here. I want to move it in between the four and the nine. Okay, so I'll go one, two, three, four places over. Put it there. So I'll have 4.9 times 10 to the negative one, two, three, four places. You have to use the little button. Check your answer. Yay. Uh, here's another one. And it's kind of hard to count all those zeros. 0 0.1, 2, 3, I think there's five of them. I, I use my arrow. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so we, uh, we want the decimal place in between the 4 and the 0 right here. So I'm going to have to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 places. So I'll have 4.09 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay. If they just give you a number that's already, so if the number that given is in between 1 and 10, it's it's one of those problems like, uh, where do we have it, number 31. So you're just going to multiply it by 10 to the 0. Right. So it's a bit silly, and it would never really come up. But here we go, 6.89353. The, the decimal is where we already want it. So you're, you're literally not moving at all. So you go times 10 to the don't move. So put a zero there. So you're just going to write the same number, 6.89353. Hit the little multiplication symbol, and then 10 to the zero. It's a bit silly, but that's kind of sometimes the reality of it. Okay, so now we get into multiplication and division of these things. And what you want to do is multiply out the constants and then multiply out the uh, powers of 10. So I have 2 times 10 to the 4th, and then 4 times 10 to the 5th. Okay, so you'll multiply out the constant parts. 2 times 4 is 8. Then to multiply out 10 to the 4th times 10 to the 5th, you add the exponents because they have like bases. Right, so it's like if you had a to the 5th times a to the 7th, you would add the exponents and get a to the 12th. So here, 10 to the 4th times 10 to the 5th is 10 to the 4 plus 5, which is 9. Right, so you get 8, and you have to use a stupid button, times 10 to the 9th. For division... Um, 44, if you divide the constant terms and use the exponent rule for quotients to divide the t powers of 10. So in that case, you're not adding the exponents, but now subtracting the exponents. So if you had like 
uh, x to the fourth all over x squared, it would be x to the four minus two, which would just be x squared. Okay, so first I have 12 divided by four is three. And then the 10 to the four over 10 to the square is 10 to the four minus two. So that would be three times 10 squared. So three multiplication symbol, 10 squared. Uh, same deal here. But at negative exponents are okay in this context. So I know we're trying to train you to avoid negative exponents, but here it's okay. All right, so you'd have six, 18 divided by six is three times 10 to the negative seven minus the three. So this would be three times 10 to the negative 10. Okay. Um, this one is a little weird because the numbers aren't as nicely behaved. You can't just easily divide out 9 and 25, right? So you just go to your calculator, 9 divided by 25 is 0.36, so 0 0.36 times 10 to the 6 minus negative 2, 0 0.36 times 10 to the 6 plus 2 will be 8, and uh-oh, it's still not in scientific notation because the 0.36 isn't, isn't in notation. So what you do is just kind of work with this portion, okay? You're going to move the decimal over one place, so that would be 3.6 times 10 to the negative 1. And then you bring down the times 10 to the 8th. And then you combine the two powers of 10. So this would be 3.6 times 10 to the negative 1 plus 8, which would be 3.6 times 10 to the 7th. So that sometimes happens. You'll do the multiplication, and you'll get a number that's no longer in scientific notation. So you just have to work with the decimal portion to turn it into scientific, which is what I did in this first uh, this step right here. I changed 0.36 into 3.6 times 10 to the negative 1. And then in the next step, I multiplied out the powers of 10 and got that 10 to the negative 1 plus 8. Okay, okay so that's going to happen. And we have 3.6, hit stupid button, 10 to the 7th. Okay, uh, now we're into different operations, but you just kind of use your rules of exponents. Um, so I have 2 times 10 to the negative 3 raised to the fourth power. So the exponent on 2 is 1, so you have 2 to the 4 times 1 is 4, times 10 to the negative 3 times 4 is negative 12, and then 2 times, four, two, times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. And now your, your first decimal number there is bigger than 10. So you've got to convert it by moving the decimal over one place. So that will give you a 1.6 times 10 to the first times 10 to the negative 12. And then you can combine the powers of 10 into 1.6 times 10 to the negative 11. Stupid GUI button. Okay, now we have some review exercises. Harder review, harder review. Okay, and then maybe a, kind of a more, multi, more complicated scientific notation problem. Um, so immediately I'm going to rewrite it. So I have uh, 5 times 10 to the 5th times 1.2 times 10 to the negative 6, and then all of that divided by 2.5 times 10 to the 2. Okay. Uh, from 
PEMDAS, you, you simplify parentheses first, but you also that also uh, corresponds to fraction bars. So you simplify the numerator and then and also simplify the denominator, and then you could simplify the overall fraction. So I'll simplify the numerator first. 5 times 1.2, I believe, is uh, 6. And then times 10 to the 5 minus 6 is negative 1, all over 2.5 times 10 squared. Oops. 5 times, oh, it's times, shoot, 1.2. I'm just checking my math here. I don't trust myself anymore. Six, okay. And then I'm going to divide the constants. So six divided by 2.5 is 2.4. And then we have 10 to the negative one minus the two. When you divide, you subtract the exponents. So 2.4 times 10 to the negative three. And then we have some uh, story problems. Let's try 51. Uh, 2009, a country's government spent more than it had collected in taxes, resulting in a budget deficit of $2.35 trillion. Use scientific notation to put a number like that into perspective. So first we want to rewrite $2.35 trillion in scientific notation. Okay, so $2.35 trillion. So we want this to be our trillions position. Okay, so it'd be 350 billion, and then 000, 000 million, and then 000, 000 for the thousands, and then 000. 000. Okay, so this would be uh, the thousands, that would be the millions, this would be the billions, and then finally the trillions comes after that. So um, for our decimal, we want to uh, put the decimal right here. Okay. The decimal right now is over here, so I have to move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I have 2.35 times 10 to the twelfth. which is a huge number, okie dokie. Um, the population in 2009 is 304 million. Okay, so 304, the millions play portion is right here. So then we'll have one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so put the decimal there, we wanna move it over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight places. So 3.04 times 10 to the eighth. Okay. Okay. 4. Stupid button. And to the eighth. Part C. Um, in total. If the total 2009 budget was evenly distributed to all the people in the country, how much would each citizen have to pay? So you're taking the um, 2.35 times 10 to the 12th trillion dollars and dividing it by the number of people in the country, 10 to the eighth people, and um, then we're gonna need two decimals, round two decimals, okay. So first, divide out the constant parts, 2.35 divided by 3.04. So that's going to give you 0 0.7. Um, we'll go, so we're going to end up having to move the decimal, so let's put 773. And then 10, times 10 to the 12 minus 8, which is 4. Well, actually... We want to turn it into a normal number. It, no, they want you to express 
the answer in scientific notation. Okay, great. So uh, to put it in scientific notation, right now the decimal portion is not in between 1 and 10. So I have to move the decimal over. That will be 7.73. There's my two decimals now. Um, times 10 to the first. Okay, that's just a 10 to the negative first. That's just rewriting this term. And then borrow down the rest of it times 10 to the fourth. And then add the exponents on the powers of 10. So 7.73 times 10 to the third. And then put it in decimal notation. So I need to move the decimal place over three places. So one, two, three. So everybody owes seven grand. Thank you, Uncle Sam. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anything about economics. But Check answer. Nice work. And well, so here we have kind of a, a physics type problem dealing with the planets. Uh, so 52, the motion formula is D equals R times T, distance equals rate times time. Light travels at 1.86 times 10 to the fifth miles per second. One point eight six times ten to the fifth miles per second. Um, the moon is approximately two point three four times ten to the fifth miles from a planet. So here we have a planet, and then its moon is kind of zipping around, and the distance here between the planet and the moon is. 2.314 times 10 to the fifth miles. And this isn't Earth, okay? The, the distance from Earth to the moon is not 23,000 miles. I no, I don't think so. It's actually a lot more, isn't it? What is the distance from the Earth to the moon. <laughs> uh, 300 and put it in, I'm putting it in the, uh, okay, his 200,000 miles. I guess, I guess that's pretty, what, what the heck is this number as a decimal? Whoops. So this is 2.314. One, two, three, four, five. But yeah, yeah, so it's pretty similar, 231,000 miles. Okay, well, I stand corrected. Okay. Um, it's, it's the same. I guess this is Earth. They're talking about Earth, right? It's 230. This one, it says it's 238 over here. But, you know, from the Earth is not perfectly round, so it, it's probably variable. Um, I don't know. I don't know enough about astronomy, I guess. I should just show up. All right, so uh, what are we trying to do here? What are we trying to answer? Where's my question at? Oh, well, please tell me I'm recording. You know? <laughs> um, there's, there, okay. So use the formula. Okay, so how long does it take the moonlight to reach the planet? Okay, so here is the sun. Here is the earth. And here is the moon. And what's happening is that there's sunlight going from the sun, and then it's reflecting off the moon, and it's going to the earth. Okay, So we want to know how long it takes for the little particles of sunlight to hit the moon and then go to the earth. Right. So it's a time variable we're after. How long? That means we're looking for time. And then in the formula, we know the distance to travel is the 2.314 times 10 to the fifth miles. We know the rate of the light. So light is traveling at a rate of 1.86 times 10 to the fifth miles per second. The only thing we don't know is the time. Okay. So we just solve this equation, divide both sides by 1.86 times 10 to the fifth. 86 times 10 to the fifth. And then I'm going to 
divide, right? Flip-flop sides, T will be, first off, this thing divided out, and we want two decimals. Okay, so eventually two decimals, 2.314 divided by 1.86er. So that would be 1.244. We'll just put 1.24. And then 10 to the fifth over 10 to the fifth is just, well, it's only going to take 1.24 seconds. So that would just be 10 to the zeroth. 5 minus 5 is 0. 10 to the zeroth is is 1. So it's just 1.24 seconds. OK, that makes sense. The light travels very fast. 1.24 seconds. Yay! All right, so cool, interesting stuff. Um, as usual, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.